Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Qasim Al-Rafi. I am the support rep here for the iTruck 365 team. And today we'll, we will be finalizing part four of the training module series, and we will be going into job roles. Today we'll be talking about how to create job roles and what a job role is. We will be creating training requirements, and then we will be linking those job roles to those employees. Should there be time for Q&A at the very end, we will make time. But as always, you can message us on LinkedIn, message us on YouTube, or email us at support at itrack365.com, um, and we can kind of get you guys' answers there. This video will be recorded and published to YouTube, so if you haven't watched our previous videos, please do so by going to youtube.com and search for itrack365. Now, if you guys haven't watched our earlier videos, we do recommend it, as I will be going over some of um you know some things that might be easier if you've watched the, the earlier ones and some terminology that might exist um, within the training module itself so as always when you load into crm we go down to training and we'll start by creating a job role so we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom on the left hand sidebar underneath the settings section we then go to job roles from there we can see all of our active job roles in the um, environment. For this example, we'll create a new one. We will call it webinar job role. We want to make sure allow for training is accepted. Is hit as yes. And if there's a job role group, you can hit add a job role group as well. And what we'll do is we'll actually hit save. Now, what a job role is is we have training requirements. Just for the sake of the training module, is this is a role that once an employee gets assigned this, any training requirement that exists within the job role will be automatically assigned to the employee who joins that job role. So for an example, if you have a job role called, you know, driver, that person might need their Alberta class five or any of their licenses that might be finished, uh, that might be required to do a driver's job. So for this example, what we're gonna start by creating a, um, that training requirements, we're going to go onto the training requirement lookup on the right hand side, hit the three dots, and select new training requirements. From there, we'll open up course right here. We're going to look for our webinar course that we created um, two weeks ago. For a certify interval, um, how long do we need this to certify? We're going to keep this blank. And at the bottom, extend to existing, we're going to keep as no. Now, what this means is um, if we've already had this job role and we're adding a new course, if any employees are already linked, we want to add that as yes. That way, if, they, if the employees who are part of the employee job role prior to us creating this training requirement needs this course to be finished, we would hit yes, whereas if they don't, we would keep it as no. Therefore, only subsequent employees who join this job role would be required to finish this course. And we'll kind of get into some of the nuances that exist within the training requirement itself. So we're going to keep this as no for now because there's still no employees inside the job role. So it won't matter if there's any existing employees. And we're going to hit save and close. Once that's finished on the lookup on the right hand side, you can see webinar course is the course that we've chosen and it's already linked to the webinar job role. From there, we're going to go into related on the top and we're going to be linking the job role to the employee using employee job roles. From there on the top ribbon, we're going to select new employee job role. We're going to go down to employee and we'll select my employee record for this example. For the start date, we're going to choose the 28th of July, which is today. And if there's an end date, you know, every three years or whatever, you can select those on the right hand side here as well. And if you have priority, um, this is an option that can be customized. You can select the, um, the priority of this employee's job role. From there, we're going to hit save and close. And it might take a lot longer to, to boot up, but we can see now that the employee is linked to that job role. So now if we go back into the iTruck portal and then we go into the employee's personal page, we'll actually see that he has a training task for that um, training requirement. If I go into personal on the left hand, bottom left hand side, 
So now when we go into the personal page on the right hand side, we go to activities. We can then see our webinar training task um, live in this little grid here. From there, we can open up the subject of the training task and we actually acknowledge and write the exam. Now, before I get into closing this exam, one thing I want to explain is if you go back into the job role, open up the webinar training course that we created about a month ago, there's a couple things that need to be done. First of all, the number of retries must be set to a certain value. If this is set to zero and um, and the person fails the exam, they actually will not be able to retry the exam. So we have to have some sort of value to make sure that they get the answer right. The next thing is if we go into the webinar exam, we can see that if I go into the webinar section, we can see that the questions themselves, that no gives you a score of zero, and yes gives you a score of 100. Therefore, if I were to select no in the iTrack portal and hit finish, it would actually give a failure message. So we hit close here. And the webinar course now says retry one, and this can go up to 100. Whereas if we go here, we go back into the webinar exam, and we give a number of retries equals three, hit save. Now it's saved, so if I try one last time and I actually fail again, one final time, on the third retry, if I hit refresh, it might be the fourth retry. So on the fourth retry, what happens is actually the training task actually goes away. So my apologies, I made a mistake there. If it says number of retries equal three, then that person actually has three chances to complete that uh, exam. And on the fourth time, it will fail. So after you finish the four retries that we've showed earlier, if we go back into Dynamics, go into Employees, search for Kasim, open up his record. Once we go there, we hit related and we go down to training records. We'll see a couple things here. Sorry, training tasks. We'll see a couple things. So from there, we'll hit all training tasks and we can see that I took the course four times. Right. On these first three records, I'll open them up separately. You can see that once it loads, exam passed, no, and retry with three. Exam passed, no, retry two and exam passed, no, we try one. And on the fourth time, what it actually will do is if we open up the final webinar course, it'll just say exam passed, no, and complete the entire training record as status completed. So then what, as the, um, as the you know team that might review my personal page, what we'd have to do is you open up employee info for myself, we would open up the training record. We would actually open up the webinar course. And then it's up to us to change the status. Now, unfortunately, I can't do it here because I am I understand that I am my own user and you're not allowed to close off your own training records with some of the uh, security requirements. However, you would then choose approved and unapproved depending on those training tasks that you would have saw um, in Dynamics or in Power BI with any of the uh, data report polls. Another thing to mention with employee job roles is if we choose a random employee and we'll choose Aaron and we open up Aaron Passzek here, we go into related, we'll go into training, we'll add a new training, we'll name the parent course webinar course, we'll hit save and close. Yeah. So now that he has this webinar course in his um, and it linked to his employee record, if we go back to job roles, search for the webinar job role, we'll go to related, hit employee job roles, and we'll actually add Aaron as one of those individuals. Once we hit save and close, if we go back into the employee record, Go back into Aaron's record and look at his training tasks. 
but as you see that he doesn't have that webinar course training task assigned to him. So what the employee job roles and job roles are able to do, they're able to see if that user already has completed that training. There's no reason to give him a um, a training task on a training that's already been completed as long as it files within that recertification, right? And you may be thinking, well, you didn't extend it to existing and I can do that right now. So if I go back into job roles, open up employee job role, hit webinar course, and then hit extend to existing equals yes, and hit save. Right, and then if you go back into Aaron's employee record, go hit related and go to training tasks, you can still see that um, the system understands that he has the training already. Therefore, we do not need to give him the training tasks that's been assigned to him. Same idea, if he already has the training task assigned to him, it will not create a duplicate from that job role as well. So there are some checks in place to make sure things like that do not happen. Okay. Um, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, like I said, there's been no QA in the chat. If you guys do have any questions, feel free, feel free to email us at support at itruck365.com. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you and all, as always, see you guys in two weeks. Bye.